If I say this TP-Link's new Archer BE9300 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router is the best, cheapest, fastest Wi-Fi 7 router in the market, I'm not exaggerating. So before we dive into the review, I want to point out there are two versions of this router. One is called BE9300, the one we are testing in this review, and the second one is called BE550. Both are Wi-Fi 7 routers. The only hardware difference between these Wi-Fi 7 router variants are the BE550 has all 2.5G LAN ports versus single 2.5G LAN port for BE9300. But the remaining hardware specs are same, including CPU and 2.5G WAN port. But where BE550 is selling for $300, you can get BE9300 for $249. So you can save $50 if you're willing to sacrifice three 2.5G LAN ports. So let's first do a quick unboxing and see its contents. The Wi-Fi 7 router comes with outstanding packaging. It comes with some quick start guides, power adapter, and an ethernet cable. Now let's look at the specs. Quad-core CPU, 802.11BE Wi-Fi 7, tri-band Wi-Fi 7 with six internal antennas, 9200 megabits per second total bandwidth, 320 megahertz channel, 4K QAM, MLO, easy mesh compatible, works with Alexa and Google, and cost only $249 at the time of this review. Now let's look at the Wi-Fi speed specs. 6G supports 802.11BE Wi-Fi 7 with 5760 megabits per second. 5G band also supports 802.11BE Wi-Fi 7 with 2880 megabits per second. And 2.4G band supports 802.11AX Wi-Fi 6 with 574 megabits per second maximum bandwidth. Now let's look at the ports. The router has one 2.5G WAN port one 2.5G LAN port, three 1GB LAN ports, one USB 3 port, power button, reset button, WPS button, Wi-Fi button, and LED button. The overall build quality is good. I really like the case design. It is easy to integrate into any home environment and plenty of ventilations helps the system stay cool under heavy load. Now let's do some performance, coverage, and speed test. So we place the Wi-Fi 7 router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it, and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test, we're using Intel BE200 Wi-Fi 7 802.11BE wireless card, which is the first Wi-Fi 7 2x2 client M.2 capable Wi-Fi card in the market. The Wi-Fi 7 brings 802.11BE EHT, which stands for Extreme High Throughput Standard, set by IEEE. So the total square footage of the house is 5,000 square feet. We tested connection extreme corners, and each floor of the house, we use 5G and 6G connection to stay focused on Wi-Fi speed test. We will be testing both 802.11BE EHT and non-EHT with both 5G and 6G connections to see if it provides real-world Wi-Fi 7 speed benefit. We also have our 10G network server configured with open speed test to get the best possible Wi-Fi speed results. So let's review the results from our Wi-Fi speed test. First location, which is within 5 feet of the router in the basement, we achieve 2.4G Wi-Fi 7 connection speed for both 5G and 6G, which is the highest Wi-Fi 7 connection speed. So excellent start. And we ran our open speed test, an average of 1.8 gigabits per second for 6G without EHT enable, and 2.4 gigabits per second for 6G with EHT enable. With 5G without EHT enable, we achieved an average between 1.7 gigabits per second and 2 gigabits per second with EHT enable. And with 5G without EHT enable, we achieved an average of between 1.7 gigabits per second and 2 gigabits per second. These are amazing results and fastest speeds we have ever recorded. And we can clearly see that by enabling EHT on the client side under advanced configuration makes tremendous difference when it comes to Wi-Fi 7 speeds. In the next test, we moved all the way to the left corner of the basement, 921 megabits per second for 5G without EHT enable and 959 megabits per second for 5G with EHT enable. And with 6G, we achieved 880 megabits per second without EHT enable and 1.7 gigabits per second for 6G with EHT enable. Next, on the main floor to the left side of the house, we achieved 296 megabits per second for 5G without EHT enable and 260 megabits per second for 5G with EHT enable. And for 6G, we achieved 101 megabits per second without EHT enable and 346 megabits per second for 6G with EHT enable. Moving on to the right side of the house, we achieve 556 megabits per second for 5G without EHT enable and 531 megabits per second for 5G with EHT enable. 
and for 6G, we achieved 382 megabits per second without EHT enable and 750 megabits per second for 6G with EHT enable. Moving on to the first floor, on the right side, we achieved 404 megabits per second for 5G without EHT enable and 356 megabits per second for 5G with EHT enable. And for 6G, we achieved 226 megabits per second without EHT enable and 264 megabits per second for 6G with EHT enable. And to the left side of the house, we achieved 852 megabits per second for 5G without EHT enable and 622 megabits per second for 5G with EHT enable. And for 6G, we achieved 405 megabits per second without EHT enable and 790 megabits per second for 6G with EHT enable. And finally, in the garage, we achieve approximately 30 megabits per second for 5G without EHT enable and 35 megabits per second for 5G with EHT enable. And for 6G, we achieve 22 megabits per second without EHT enable and 26 megabits per second for 6G with EHT enable. In the next test, we use 2.5G Ethernet port network connection of the router and connect it to the same 10GB NAS and using both 5G and 6G connection at 2.4 gigabits per second to transfer the 5GB file and we were able to achieve 200 plus megabytes per second read and write wireless transfer speed. So 2.4 gigabits per second wireless speed is a limiting factor here. But these extra bandwidth option will shine when you have Ethernet connected devices instead of wireless clients. But the good thing is, if you have a faster NAS, it can utilize a full speed of 2.4 gigabits per second bandwidth. In the final test, we use USB 3 SSD flash drive share as a file server on a Wi-Fi 7 router. The TP-Link USB share will show up as a shared media device. So if you want to use Wi-Fi 7 router as a NAS, all you have to do is connect a USB storage and enable file sharing. The Wi-Fi 7 router performance was above average, scoring 200 plus megabits per second read and write score, which is not bad for a USB flash drive. Now let's talk about setting up the Wi-Fi 7 router. Setup was a very easy three-step process. All you have to do is download the TP-Link app to your Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem, or if you have Fios with Ethernet connection, you can connect the router's WAN port directly to the Ethernet cable, and you don't need a modem. Then just follow the instructions and app to complete the setup. There are tons of settings available to configure. You can also use the TP-Link's web-based configuration to manage the router's familiar configuration options. It is definitely gamers and professionals' dream come true, and also allows parents to use extensive parental controls to keep an eye on their kids and block malware websites with built-in securities. In the advanced settings, there are 10 of options to choose, which are usually standard options for all TP-Link wireless routers. That includes VPN server client options and BE9300 Wi-Fi 7 supports easy mesh option to connect multiple Wi-Fi 7 or TP-Link mesh capable routers to create one big mesh network to cover the big square footage. You can modify each wireless band setting separately as well. Keep separate SSID for each band and multiple channel selections. You can enable MLO settings for Wi-Fi 7 devices as they become available in the future to have better Wi-Fi experience. Let's do the final summary. TP-Link Archer BE9300 and BE550 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router did perform extremely well on this review. The Wi-Fi 7 router offers faster speed compared to the previous gen Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E routers. It is an excellent Wi-Fi 7 router with the best Wi-Fi 7 router price in the market, especially if you can find the BE9300 variant, which is $50 cheaper than the BE550 variant. The 802.11 BE EHT performance is outstanding in short range and long range test. So if you upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 router, I would highly recommend upgrade to Intel BE200 Wi-Fi 7 wireless card for your client or laptops to achieve the best possible Wi-Fi 7 speeds. On that basis, I highly recommend TP-Link Archer BE9300 or BE550 Wi-Fi 7 router for anyone who is in the market for new Wi-Fi 7 router without breaking the bank. Let me know what you guys think of the review in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and sub to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.